You are about to embark on a journey into Schrodinger's Hat, a place where science facts coexists with science fiction, a place where everything you see and hear is simultaneously real and completely made up. So settle down, relax, and enjoy your time in the capable hands of the Free Radicals! Okay, without further ado, um, I'll just quickly, quickly introduce our speaker this evening, who's Martin Milmore, and he's Head of Technology for Oracle's um, Artificial Intelligence Applications. Martin's responsible for big data and machine learning platform, which is used in Oracle to add AI to many different business applications. The title of his talk, well, his subject matter is uh, Bias in Artificial Intelligence. So please be welcome to the stage, Martin Milmore. <laughs> Good evening. Hello. Hey. I'd like to start. Any gardeners out there know what this is? Well, yeah. <laughs> you've nailed it. <laughs> this is a bromeliad. This is the most amazing plant. Nature has optimised this plant for living in the rainforest. It has these beautiful leaves that catch water. Uh, it can live in soil, on trees, or anything. It is the epitome of evolution for plants living in the, name, in the rainforest. A fantastic example of nature in action. This is also a bromeliad. <laughs> this is what happens from nurture. When you fail to nurture your plants properly, you end up with this. So this is the classic conflict between nature and nurture. And in fact, nature versus nurture was... First, <laughs> coined by Francis Galton. One of Charles Darwin's cousins, in the 1800s, he coined the term nature versus nurture as he was telling the difference between human beings. He was studying how human beings evolve. He was a little bit of a eugenicist and he did advocate <laughs> that we should uh, pay prestigious families to interbreed. Well, we don't really agree with that kind of thing these days, but the, the, the term nature versus nurture is still very relevant today. Uh, by the way, Francis Galton also invented statistical regression, something that we use very heavily in machine learning and artificial intelligence, something we will come on to in the talk in a little bit. But nature versus nurture, that's also something that's very topical for human beings. For example, a very popular Freakonomics book by Stephen Dubner and Stephen Levitt talks about having books in the household. If you have 50 books in your household, your children will do 5% better in tests. 10% better if you have a hundred books. But it actually makes no difference whether they are reading the books or not. So you might think that it was nurture having the books. In fact, it was nature. It was the genes that the children inherit from the sorts of people who will buy books. So that's a clear example of where we think that actually nature is stronger than nurture. But what about artificial intelligence? How can nature versus nurture apply to artificial intelligence? Well, actually, quite strongly. So artificial intelligences, uh, they don't reproduce. We don't have survival of the fittest there. Except in some senses we do. There are uh, lots of competitions for artificial intelligence. There's a website called Kaggle where data scientists compete to produce the, the, the best data science, the best models of the world. Uh, and in fact, this is worth an awful lot of money. For example, the Department of Homeland Security had a challenge where they had one and a half million dollars in prize money for people who could build the best model for threat detection. And so that obviously incentivized an awful lot of data scientists to put the, the, the best work in 
to build the best models, build the best algorithms. And those algorithms, there's one very popular algorithm that was developed by people who are using the Kaggle website, and that's called XGBoost. And XGBoost is a, a clever way of combining lots of different data science algorithms, quite weak algorithms, to produce very strong results. So this algorithm was uh, invented by someone called Tanki Chen, and uh, as soon as he invented it, it basically shot to the top of the charts in Kaggle. Every single competition, every single exaggeration, many competitions have been won by people using that algorithm. So that's previously there were lots of different algorithms that people were using. This one suddenly was so much better than all the others. And what it has meant is that lots of people have developed it, enhanced it, make it better. A lot of work has gone into that algorithm because it was a successful one. Less successful algorithms don't get maintenance, don't get people developing them. So that's a clear example of survival of the fittest is what is making the, the AI algorithms better and better. So you might think, well, clearly that means that uh, machine learning, AI, that is all about nature. We need to have the best algorithms. But Let's talk about nurture. So nurturing in human beings. In human beings, the parents of children will nurture them carefully. And what you do as a parent has a very strong influence, both positive, and like I put plant, also <laughs> negative. Uh, examples <laughs> for human beings, you can keep that. <laughs> <laughs> examples for human beings, uh, vegetables. The strongest indicator of whether you can get your child to eat vegetables is whether you are eating vegetables yourself and protein. Well. On the flip side, if you smoke, your children <coughs> are twice as likely to smoke. So that's very clear examples of nurture. The children are modeling, uh, copying your behavior. Well, the same applies in artificial intelligence too. The way that we build artificial intelligences, so I've talked about machine learning as well as artificial intelligence. Machine learning is a branch of artificial intelligence where we build some fancy code, but we don't tell it what to do when we code it. Instead, we show it examples of real life. And it trains based on this, it builds a model. So, for example, I can show it lots of pictures of cats. <laughs> and I have to tell the computer, these are cats, and it will learn what those cats are. And when I show it another picture of a cat, it will know what a cat looks like. And I will show it lots of pictures of dogs. And then it will learn exactly what those dogs are. And this is very common. You can train the computer on pictures, and it will then be able to distinguish those different types of pictures. So that's one example. Uh, another example uh, is we can train it on, on data that we see in, in the real world. So banks, for example, will use past data about loans, and they'll look and see who defaulted on their loans, what did, what did that person look like. And they can see people who had these characteristics paid back their loans, people who had these characteristics defaulted on the loans. And so we're training the computer how to make a judgment about should you be lending someone some money. And of course, by doing this, we're taking that human decision out of the equation. It doesn't depend on uh, somebody sitting in a bank going, oh, I don't like the look of them. I'm not going to give them a loan. We put it down to the machine, and so everything's wonderful. We've got a system there where it's, it's completely removed all that, that human nonsense from them. But does that actually work? Well, some of the problems here is that humans are fallible and humans are the ones who are training the machines. So for example, my cat pictures and my dog pictures, I could be training those. Maybe I've made a mistake. Did anyone spot? That's not a dog. <laughs> now, you can make little mistakes like that, actually you can have systematic mistakes. 
when they had, uh, when uh, we were processing some historical census data, uh, you might remember a few years ago, they got the 1900 census and they digitized it. And what they actually did is they got prisoners to do the typing. So prisoners, they, they get jobs, you know, making number plates, sewing mail bags, that's the old stuff. These days, it's data entry. <laughs> and uh, that was okay, they, they did quite a good job, other than people whose occupation was police or prison guards. They put some quite unsafe <laughs> <laughs> terms of those that had to be filtered out. But frankly, it's not just prisoners who might make those sort of malicious mistakes. Have a think about the sort of people you run into online. Are you really telling me you trust every single one of those to not be malicious about, uh, about typing in fake things? Because I can guarantee you they are. So that's some examples of how we can get that, that sort of, uh, that, that fake data in there. But even if we have great data, well, I've trained this on cats and mostly dogs. <laughs> what happens? I get a picture of a sheep. <laughs> well, I haven't trained my AI on pictures of sheep. So it is not going to have a clue what to do. It will tell me it is either a cat or a dog, because that is all it knows. And this actually happens in real life. Uh, for example, Google had uh, an issue a few years ago where if it was shown a picture of a black person, instead of saying this is a person, it was saying it was a gorilla. Now this was not Google's intent. Google absolutely did not want this, but this was a result of the training predominantly being on white men's faces. In fact, this is so extreme, you can get uh, software that will predict the gender of a person. And it is 99% successful at predicting the gender of a white man based on their face. But a colored woman, only 35% successful. And that is an example of bias in AI, where we have trained it on a very biased set of data, and as a result, we have these problems. Uh, another example, if you take a picture of somebody in a kitchen, it is more likely to predict that their gender is a woman, purely because it is in a kitchen. So it's looking at that background data and making an assumption about who that person is going to be. So that's where we've trained the AI in a biased way. Uh, so, other examples we've talked about the loans. The banks are making these loans, and the banks are training based on the historic data. Let's think about the historic data that they've got. Something that some of you may not appreciate is that until recently, relatively recently, banks were allowed to refuse a woman a loan unless they had a man as a guarantor. That was true until 1980. So relatively recently, we have had these biases. And of course, if I'm training the system on historic data, well, that historic data doesn't, you don't have to go too far back for us to have these biases in training the data. Now, of course, you could do something about that. You could, well, let's just not pass through the gender. Let, 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 let's leave that out so that we, we, we don't have any of those biases. But there's actually a whole host of other things in the data that can be exposing those biases. So uh, let's say, for example, uh, I pass through somebody's name. Well, okay, that gives you gender. It also can give you age. For example, if you're called Norman, I'm sorry, you're not a millennial. <laughs> uh, so that sort of thing can give away hints. So we, we remove name, that's, that's not a problem. There is other information that can be in there. Your job title. If you have uh, certain job titles, you are more likely to be senior, you're more likely to be older. Uh, if you want a car, that can be an indicator of your, of your age. You play golf. All sorts of things like that can give away hints. Now, Amazon spent some time building an artificial intelligence to help with that hiring. They wanted to remove that horrible human bias from it. 
and so they, they fed in the history of their successful applicants so they could hire more people like the, the good employees. Well, again, what they found basically it picked it them. So, okay, they, they started removing information. Obviously, they removed gender, that, that, that goes. Remove sports clubs. Statistically, if you played rugby, you are more likely to be a man than if you played hockey. It's not a it's not a binary thing, but you know it's a hint. Uh, so remove clubs, uh, remove societies. What about past employers? Well, do you know if your past employer had a bias, then that bias is coming through. You've only got a job there if you are a man or a woman, for example. Uh, universities. What university you went to can reflect what your race is. Uh, if you went to the, the Bangalore Institute of Technology, there is this very, very st much stronger chance that you're Indian. Uh, so there's different biases that come about from that. And so Amazon removed all those things. But artificial intelligence is really, really good at finding hints in data. And in the end, what they found is that even just the language that was in somebody's CV gave away information about what their gender was. So men tend to use terms um, like, I did this, I achieved this. Women tend to use terms like, we collaborate. And even just this distinction of language was enough for the AI to pick out the biases that were previously existing in the company. Now, in Amazon's credit, they never used this. They tested it, they decided, look, this is just too biased. We cannot actually put this into production. So it, what they did is they reformed the hiring practices and uh, didn't use the AI for it because of its biases. This is a clear example of how we need to carefully nurture the artificial intelligence. We need to be very careful with the data that we feed them. So we can have bias in AI, but is that always a bad thing? Now, I've got biases. I'm very biased against going into rooms with hungry lions in. I'm very biased against employing children to go sweep chimneys. I'm very biased against sending money to Nigerian princes and sending me emails. Because all of these things are going to hurt me. I know they are. So having a bias actually isn't bad. It can be healthy. It protects you. What we really care about is fairness. So often when we talk about <laughs> is an AI biased, what we mean is is an AI unfair? But the challenging thing is fairness is a human construct. How do we decide what's fair and what's not? So, for example, in today's society, we have decided that it's unfair to discriminate against someone based on their race, their gender, their age, their sexuality. What we consider fair there has changed over the years. In 1980, it was considered perfectly fair to discriminate against the woman. We've now decided that that is an inappropriate thing to discriminate on. But actually, we still have biases that we do consider fair. We discriminate in hiring based on intelligence. We discriminate in hiring based on criminality. These are things that today we do consider fair to have biases for. How is the machine meant to know? How is it meant to understand what is a fair bias and what is an unfair bias? And this is a very challenging thing. And so that's why it's very important for us when we're looking at nature versus nurture and artificial oh. intelligences. It's not just look at the shiny, shiny algorithms that help us do the artificial intelligence, that, that nature, that evolving of great code. But also, we need to pay very, very close attention to the nurture. How do we train these artificial intelligences? How do we make sure that they are fair? Thank you.
One second, one second, I'm counting the books. <laughs> I think it's about time that we send off our children out into the world. Out into the world? Well, uh, look, we've both given them the the XG genome, and they're going to send one there. What did you give them? Nothing. You didn't ask me. Well, we needed to. We need to see how it would work. Well, if we send one to the jungle uh -huh. and one to a bustling metropolis, right? And we can watch them from afar and see how they get on. But I don't want to be far from my children at all. The results have come through, Father. Yes, child. <laughs> Granddad's name mm. wasn't Dickhead. No, it was not, child. Mm. Datchet. Datchet, yes. <laughs> Chief Inspector Datchet. Chief Inspector Datchet. <laughs> also <laughs> bullying. <laughs> <laughs> Could I have my usual father? Okay. Two fingers. Oh! <laughs> I'm not a dickhead anymore, I'm a dead <laughs> You'll always be a dickhead to me, son. <laughs> <laughs> Can dickhead come out to play? Dead shit! I'm not ready for this, Gerald. It's okay. Ali and Abby, we have something to tell you. My what? beautiful girls! What's that, brother, father? Yes, tell us, do, parents. We feel that you've come of age and you are ready to go out into the world. It's too soon! No, it's not! No, we're allowed to watch a 12A! <laughs> yes. But they are growing up perfectly the same. We will see how they deal with different circumstances. Yay! You! You'll be sent to the jungle with nothing but a backpack and a machete. Is there anything in the backpack, father? Of course not. <laughs> wait, wait, let me at least give her a pack of raisins. Okay. Here. Just what I need in a hot environment. Take your vegan raisins and go. Be good, Daddy! Now, Abby. Yes? You will be sent to the nearest bustling metropolis that we can think of right now. Oh, it doesn't have to be too bustling. Oh, Slough? Yes, Slough. <laughs> oh, he'll need a machete too. No, 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 mother. They've got the biggest Tesco's in Europe. I'll be fine. Oh, no, we're a waitress family. In the jungle. <laughs> oh, I love what you've done with the place. Yeah, yeah, I thought maybe we could um, just put a load of caps on the walls. Uh, but one of them's not a cat. Guess which one? Uh, it's a child. Um, what? What? Uh, yeah, that's the one. They're the one without hair. Um, fancy a cocktail? It's not these. It's not, though. It could be. Actually, we probably should frame it as that. We'll call it a Siamese, not a child. Okay. <laughs> what are you offering? Uh, well, after just open my globe, um, I've got Ooh. I've got tequila, rum, vodka, gin. Kumo? Um, Do you have any kumo? Some what? Kumo. What's a kumo? <laughs> kumel. What's kumel? For goodness sake! I thought you were travelled. I thought the globe meant you travelled. No, the globe is a place to hide my alcoholism. <laughs> <laughs> handy that way. No one knows I'm secretly really sad. Actually, to be honest, I love the empty. Um Well, there's lots of blue cr crayon on those ones. Yeah, slouch, 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 Remove this gold. Oh. <laughs> um, I'm looking for um, somewhere to live, perhaps. Is that right? Yes. Did you have uh, any sort of standards? Sir, yes, very, 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 very high. Where were you raised, girl? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't see my flashback anyway. Because... No, describe it to me, girl. Oh, 
I live in the castle <laughs> with my twin sister. <laughs> my twin sister, you know, identical. Yeah, in every way. Every way. And we would go out every Let's single day. Let's pick flowers. To look for flowers and fairies. Oh. I don't understand, there was three sisters or two. <laughs> that was our younger brother. Younger brother, he had issues. His name was Nigel, so I you know. Should I be able to hear the flashback of your twin sister as well? Yes! <laughs> because I seem to be directly being addressed by your twin sister. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, what was your name, Mr. Mayor of Sam? <coughs> That sounds real nice, little girl. You never mentioned your name. Well, my name is whatever they call me in the end. Which I remember rightly. You look like oh, Abby! Abby. Was, <laughs> Abby. Was, was Abby! Thank you, Seagull. You look like an Abby. <laughs> Abby, I want to show you my home. Oh. <coughs> Excuse me? Is this my turn? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a, a more up-to-date map? This one doesn't seem to be working. I have a machete and half a tin of sunmade. <laughs> <laughs> tin of sunmade? Yes! Oh. Mm, a catering tin? Yep! <laughs> Can I have some? Uh, yes! Heavy! Yeah. It's so heavy because it's a catering tin! Oh, your friend is gone. <laughs> he was an absolute unit. <laughs> um, <laughs> are they vegan? <laughs> yes. Okay, no, sorry. Pick oh. yourself. Pick yourself. <laughs> All right. Oh, you I have to say, the jungle's very different to what I thought it was. You're going to have to get used to using bush meat, young oh. <laughs> Is that machete sharpened? Yes. Okay, here comes a critter now. Oh. Get it out. What Back kind of the head. Really? It doesn't matter. What? Get it back in the head! Really? But I can't! Oh, oh it's gone. you're gonna have to learn the law of the jungle, young girl. Oh. Bloop, 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 bloop. Yes. AI Beta is doing very well and has made friends with the mayor already. And AI Lima has made friends as well. But I don't think she's gonna be vegan for long. Gerald, I like that we're more official now, since we are observing our children like scientists. Yes. However, I am still very concerned for their well-being. Well, you shouldn't be. <laughs> They're absolutely fine. After all, they've got the XG protection genome. You keep saying that, but I'm worried about their little bottoms. Their what? <laughs> <laughs> their ah. cute little bottoms, Gerald! You know I love their bottoms! Their bottoms could be anywhere right now! They could be in severe bottom danger! <laughs> well, we could always call the bottom expert, and he could go in and inspect them from afar. This lab coat has changed you, Gerald! I'm Just sorry. take it off! I'm sorry. I don't like it! One second. Oh, I actually need to Oh eat dear. <laughs> you shouldn't have eaten that frog in your poor insides. Oh! Thank oh goodness we're goodness near me. Sophia, we can see the bottom doctor. I, That's a city in Spain. There is no bottom doctor in the jungle. Oh. It's all first aid, self-administered, or if you don't know how to do it, I can help you. What? <laughs> what do I you have you? rituals and routines. They're, these leaves. These leaves, they're therapeutic. Therapeutic bottom leaves. <laughs> they have a juice of balsam in them that's very soothing. But you must be careful with the prickles. Oh, well, that doesn't sound like something I should do with the mirror crouched down. No. <laughs> Maybe Machete. I need some help. Machete? And boiling. <laughs> what? You boil them first. You want me to put boiling you... metal leaves on my bum bum? <laughs> no, you need to extract the balsam for your bum bum. I don't know what that means! Oh, for goodness sake. I wonder how my sister's getting along. So, girl. And thanks, Mary. Uh, this is what we call hip hop. Can you hear it? Yes, I quite like it. Sit back, red legged, don't take no slack. It's good. I like PJ Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> now, I keep my bottles out in the open because I'm not as well traveled as some. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just drink straight from the bottle, girl. Okay. Um, uh, Mibu. Am I saying it right? That's right. 
Millaboo. Millaboo. <laughs> Coconut rum. It's my favorite mm. room. <laughs> <laughs> darling, darling, darling. What? what would your mother say about your little bottom? Huh? <laughs> she would say, What are you doing? You don't know this one. <laughs> Listen, Lafonda. <laughs> I've found a problem. Both of my children have gone out and seek men. Mm. Because they must think that men are more protective or something. Mm. So I need you to go and infiltrate them what? and be all woman like. What? And see if they'll go with you instead. Do you want me to be a lady? Yes. <laughs> Honey! Who is he? I'm well, a lady. One second. <laughs> Just... <laughs> one second. Honey, I'm not sure what you've just done, but I'll continue dusting, as our daughters have learned is so important okay. for me to do. One second. I'm a lady. Where's the mop, honey? The mop? Yes. You wouldn't know where the mop, mop is, would you, Gerald? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> Found the mop. Well, you wear that on your head, and thus you look like a woman. I'm a lady. Yes. <laughs> the mop. The mop, girl. Um, Come on. This is the biggest Tesco in Europe. Yeah, sorry. We need to be able to see our faces in the yes. tiles. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Ian Tesco's. I'm trying my best. <laughs> Do your best. Every little helps, yes. but a lot <coughs> of a little is needed for you to get your one star. My Back. one star. It's my only dream at night is to get my one star. And, and you know what happens after one star, don't you? Two stars? No, a pay oh, rise for this! Pay rise! Sake. I get paid for this! <laughs> I love minimum wage! You mean, you mean, uh, <laughs> you were bothered about getting paid? No! Did you know this is actually the biggest Tesco's in Europe? <laughs> you mean, you, you'd be happy just be here because it's the biggest in Tesco? As long as I can have those crisp things you keep giving me. You know, skips. <laughs> no. Skips are very expensive. We'll have to, uh... Frazzles? Dock your wages. What wages? Well, that's the point. <laughs> You're working for Skips. Oh, <gasps> there, there we go. A perfect arrangement. Yeah. Ding dong. Uh, this is a staff announcement. Would, uh, Abby Jacobson, uh, please come to the staff room where there's a very manly looking woman here to examine your pom pom. The mother's here! Off you go. <laughs> Ah. Hello. Hello. Was that a surprise? Yeah, yeah. not a surprise. Come in, step into my room. Thank you. I got a room here, you know. That's great. I know you. Should, yeah, I kind need to do that because um, that's all. So, and your bum bum's gone boo boo. Oh. <laughs> you got the letters then? Uh, yeah. It's quite detailed and graphic letters. Yeah, we well, have. Uh, Father likes them. Yes, he does. He read them to me. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay, well, drop your trousers, look on the bar bum bum. <laughs> okay, that's a bum bum. Okay, no need to pose, we're not taking photographs now. Sorry, oh, sorry. Okay. Freeze! <laughs> Honey, remember, if anyone that you don't know asks to inspect your bum bum, do not let them do it. Your mother. Lorraine? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing? I haven't inspected you. I've got the tickle around. Oh, no, no, no. I just had um, a. You had a, you had a what? No, I got a letter what? from what? my mother. Letter? And she said that. <laughs> <laughs> Love Lorraine. <laughs> Second star yet? Um, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, no sweeties. No sweet. I was skips. Oh, skips. Come, come, follow the. Come there. Gerald, 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 Gerald. How could our daughters at all be prepared for the situations that we've put them in when 
unbeknownst to me, you removed all of the books from our shelves and replaced them with photos of cats and dogs. Yes, I programmed them. What do you from mean? From the young age. But didn't you also do some GX gene bullshit? I wasn't really kidding. That artificial intelligence. What, Gerald? Yes. What does this mean is going to happen to Abby and Adrian? Abby! Abby! <laughs> Marty Delatrian! Abby stands for Artificial Intelligence Beta. But I remember so clearly they were in my womb. Yes, after I impregnated you with that memory stick. <laughs> Mary, who's over? Why are you using such technical language? <laughs> over the years, I've been training them to look out for these things, to trust people, to not trust people, and to be biased. And I've always told them to look out for their bottoms. Yes, <laughs> yes you have. Are you saying that because they are artificial? Yes, artificial. In Yes, you do need that. That they don't actually have bum bums to protect? That is where you insert the floppy disk. Oh. <laughs> I'm confused, you Didn't you wonder why they always had a three and a half inch slot down there? <laughs> witch doctor. Oh, great witch doctor. I need you to look at this very sickly child. Yes, I'm very sickly. <laughs> She's My name's... Ali! Adri Ali! Ali Abogwa! She swallowed some, she swallowed some tree frog and her, yes. her bum bum is not My bum bum hurts! <laughs> no, I'm doing the voice! Okay! So! What we do? We find out or what is wrong? What do you need me to do? Drop your trousers! Oh, Let's okay. look at the bum bum! So I get really from my mother, she doesn't care about me. Dear little <laughs> Ali, mommy, Dali, Dali, my little darling girl, the second born twin that came from my womb. Remember, if you ever happen to be in the jungle, <laughs> and a strange man asks to inspect your bottom, you must never allow him to do it. Your mother, Lorraine or something. <laughs> Uh, I, I had a letter from my mother. Okay. Oh, let's okay. just go. Let's say I'm more curious. <laughs> okay. So, as you can see, it withered and died. Which means you're dead. My God. How much data was stored on there? <laughs> that looks like 16 kilobytes of leaf. There's <laughs> some JPEGs on there. Not what? An MP3! No, you couldn't fit an MP3 on one of those! Technology has moved on a lot since you left Slough. What? <laughs> so, Gerald, what you're saying to me is, even though I raised them and hammered them ever so motherly... It meant fuck all. ...and that they are actually capable of handling themselves and also committing acts of violence? Perhaps. We're seeing strange anomalies in Ali, and I'm quite concerned. Is her heart rate exceeded the normal beats per minute of my, of my average twin daughter? Yes. How did you know that? Well... Maybe your motherly bond with them is stronger than science. I did feed them from my breasts. Yes. And perhaps that... I didn't input that. So you're saying that the violent nature may actually come yeah. from me? Perhaps. Um, I'm just going to go for a moment to the shed, Gerald. Okay. To retrieve... Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, strange. I'll just stand here and turn away and go on my computer again. Morning! Hey, what, what, what? We're, not, we're not here anymore, Gerald. Oh, God, it's God. <laughs> and you're here. <laughs> That's what I wanted. A, a head. <laughs> to go on to my snowman. <laughs> Just a grand thing I like to do sometimes during the day, make snowmen. And women. Not biased. Quiet <laughs> <laughs> carrots. You bastard. That's fine. 
<laughs> That's fine. Yeah, right. There we go. That's a nose. That's a nose. Sorted. Yeah, go on then. We'll put one on his forehead, one on her right cheek, and then I eat this one. What? What? Say something. God damn it. Its resemblance is uncanny. It, it's a Siamese cat. <laughs> That's what I was going for. Oh. A Siamese man woman cat. Here, here, pussy, pussy, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. pussy. Here, just... pussy, pussy. Come in, darling. Come on in, darling. How was your day at Tesco? Oh, it was great, thank you, Mr. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's time for us to drink again. Okay, oh, okay, okay, girl. <laughs> Have you got some rum? Kahlua? Kahlua, yeah. Ooh. Little baby girl, take this. Oh, do you like my new ninja knife set? I just happened to put it there. <laughs> ninja stuff. That's right. Little baby girl, what's going on with your eyes? You got some strange look in your eyes. Well, you don't like living with me anymore? No, the mayor of Slap. <laughs> no, I was thinking. I was thinking something too. What were you thinking? You know this cot that I sleep on? Yeah, it's the child's cot for some reason. I was thinking maybe you and I sleep on it together, little girl. You're bottom up against me. <laughs> I don't understand how that would work. Well, you mean you like your videos? <laughs> you saw my videos, huh? The, the videos, the DVDs, the magazines, the lasers, the beta max. <laughs> whoa, 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 baby girl. You're getting a little bit angry. You're starting to scare me a little bit. I'm not getting angry. Hey, why don't we do some foreplay? Foreplay? What do you mean, baby? Oh, just like this. Stop! But I'm the mayor! Jungle, 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 go. <laughs> You've got mail! Oh, something from my sister. I wonder what it says. Dear Miss Sister! Oh, oh shit, there was a lot of blast. Oh, I need your help. I may or may not. I killed a motherfucker. <laughs> I thought about popping a cap in his ass, but instead, ninja stars. Totally radical, dude. Please, at your earliest convenience, please come and visit me in Slough at Tesco's. Did you know that Tesco's is the biggest Tesco's in Europe? You'll find me on aisle 807, neck to the knives. Yours sincerely, your darling sister. Whatever my name was, Abby. Oh my god! She's having such a terrible time, my voice is breaking! Ah! I need to get my way to Slough! But how? Airplane! Yes. You know what? 
As you are my very strong husband. Uh, very strong. Will you hold it for me? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Gerald, can you turn that way? Okay. Is the light better that way or something? That's a good answer because... <coughs> yes, it, oh, that's far better. Yes. This is upside down. <laughs> oh, I only meant to burn the letter, sweetheart. <laughs> You've changed me, Gerald. I thought that I was just a meek woman, and that perhaps I would be like this forever. But what I've learned, Gerald, are you this? Oh, you're dead. Gerald? This? I can't believe it. I know. These children are orphans and they don't even know it yet. <coughs> They're orphans? What? What? Why? It was a murder suicide. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so I switched stop when you were talking. <laughs> Sorry. I know, it happens all the time. I, I know, it's, it's a condition. Undertaker. <clears throat> yeah, what? <laughs> what is going to happen to that child, children? No, the, the two A's. We need somebody. The Ali Babi. We need somebody to see them off. You're, to do what? <laughs> Ali! Ali, where are you? I'm home, I'm in the castle! Where's mother? Where's father? Oh! Oh, here. No! <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah, they're dead. <laughs> it looks like a murder suicide, just like we had that flashback that one time we thought it might be. Oh my god. We, we couldn't recognize them. We used an AI piece of software and it interpreted them as a cat and a pigeon. <laughs> it was only DNA that we realised it was your parents. True. So sorry. <laughs> Sounds like there might be some bias in your testing. <laughs> what, what, what are you eating? Scoops. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 hey.